Hi guys, I'm Kaylin, the author, the author of The Prejudice Bond, and today in this quick video we are going to talk about bar spacing because a viewer had asked about proper bar spacing for a green cheek conure and I feel like there can be some confusion. I think she was getting mixed answers online. So, what is the proper bar spacing for your parrot? Now, in order to answer that question, what we're going to talk about is a parrot's beak and head. So, since I can't manipulate my parrots and like have them go like this and do that kind of thing, I'm going to have to use my hand. I really like having parrots in my video and today is an exception for this. Now, the idea to the bar spacing is that a cage should really be a space where your parrot can be safe and secure. Hopefully it's not a place where they're caged. Hopefully you are really giving them that engagement. They're coming out, they're flapping their wings, they're flying around. But when they're in their cage, they should be nice and safe. The bar spacing, the deal is that it is meant to hold your parrot in. And so if this was my parrot's head, hold them in so that they can't do something like if, if my thumb was the parrot's head, um, do something like put their head through. At, and of course, it would be reversed, right? My hand would be inside the cage. But anyway, um, and your parrot, you know, is trying to get out and they get their head stuck and their neck is stuck, and then they're, they could possibly like strangle themselves because they're now gonna get injured. They're gonna freak out, they're gonna move their wings, they're gonna maybe get their wings stuck in the bar spacing. It could be a really big problem. So when you look at bar spacing, the best thing to do is, as best you can, maybe feel or measure your parrot's head, the skull, and see the diameter that goes across. You would want a bar spacing where their their head cannot go through. You want a smaller bar spacing so that, like I'm trying to, so that they couldn't, like if my two knuckles were the width of my parrot's head, they can't in any way get their head in and through and stuck. That is going to be a safe bar spacing. So, for example, for a macaw, there's going to be larger bar spacing than this because a macaw's head and beak are so big that they, you know, they can easily have more space between the bars and safely stay in the cage. Now, a smaller parrot, they can have, or they obviously need the bar spacing closer together because their heads are smaller. So it's all about really the size more than anything else of their head so they don't get stuck. The second thing to consider is their beak. If you notice, I didn't do this on purpose, it worked out perfectly. These bars, this one right here is bent a little. See how these are more parallel? And this one, it's, it's a little wider because this guy is bent. And maybe these are both a little bent. And that's because this cage is our macaw's perch for when they're out back here. So. We don't put them in it, although sometimes it's kind of funny when one of our macaws comes in to rest. But um, it's the door, there even shouldn't even be a door, but the door is always open and she can just come in or out. But usually they're just hanging out up here. So what happens though is these bars are gentle enough that the macaws have bent them. So the, that, the second thing you want to look at with bar spacing, which isn't usually as big of a deal, if your parrot's head, if the first one qualifies, your parrot's head doesn't fit through the bars, you're usually pretty good. But the second thing you want to look at is your parrot's beak. Hook bills, as they're also known, as parrots are also known, their beaks are so strong that they can bend things, break things, you know how that goes. And if you don't know how that goes, macaws can break walnuts and coconuts open. They have very strong beaks. Oh, maybe it's only hyacinths that can do... Nope, nope, my macaws break open coconuts. So exceedingly strong bills. And therefore, a cage that's made for a macaw will have harder bars. And I'll show you an example of that right now inside where it'll be noisy. So this, for example, it's going to be for a parrot that's smaller, an Indian ring neck. Um, it would work for green cheek, probably, you know, this could be a problem. Now that it's bent, maybe not so much. So you'll notice that the smaller cages for smaller parrots, the wires will be more gentle, more soft, because those smaller parrots aren't going to be able to bend them as well. Whereas a bigger cage, like for a macaw or an African gray, 
the bars are gonna be stronger. So let's look at one like that right now. Okay, so now we've got Adonis who's showing us the stronger bars. So you can see these bars, they're going nowhere. I can't, I'm, <laughs> I don't want her to bite me. They, um, they're not going anywhere. And um, they are gonna stand up to a beak like hers or a macaws. You'll also notice that the spacing is further apart. And this is probably, um, what is it, a three quarter inch or something like that? It's further apart because their heads are bigger. And so that is the trick to what's gonna keep your parrots safely in. So if you're ordering online, you know, measure your parrot's head as best you can, or keep looking, because there are some sites that have good information, but in any case, just make sure that you're getting something where they won't be able to get their head in and where the, their, the bar strength will match them. Thanks for joining me in this blissful video. If you have any questions, please be sure to comment or post below, and I will catch you in the next Feathered Adonis video.